Welcome to episode 16 of the 3AM Fear podcast. On August 27, 2021, Nicole received a text from her 22-year-old daughter, Gabby's number, saying she could not talk to her because there was no service in Yosemite, California. Nicole found this text a little odd because she knew that Gabby had not been planning to visit Yosemite and Gabby was in Utah at that time, while Yosemite is in California. Gabby and her then boyfriend slash fiance Brian were on a long van road trip when this text was sent. Gabby then sent a text to Nicole saying, quote, "Can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls." End quote. Stan is Gabby's grandfather, but as per Nicole, Gabby never called him Stan. That's when Nicole suspected that the texts that she was receiving were not from her daughter Gabby. and that something had gone terribly wrong 22 year old gabby petito was officially reported missing by her family on 11 september 2021 hello and welcome to the 3 am fear podcast I'm Nikita Ferrao, mystery and thriller author. On this podcast, I talk about real crimes and real people. Due to the graphic nature of some of this content, listener discretion is advised. You can find the episode show notes on my website 3amfear.com. Let's get started. This case has generated so much buzz that Lifetime is releasing a movie on it. Everyone is interested. Everyone wants to know what happened. How did it happen? This is the first of the two episodes in the Gabby Petito series. In this episode, we will be going through a detailed timeline of what happened to her till she was found. The media is portraying Gabby as a young woman who was a popular social media influencer, a star I would say. But before all that, Gabby Petito was a poor little girl. She like many others had her dreams and aspirations. She had a zest for life and wanted to document everything that she experienced. She wanted a strong social media presence. The van trend had been building on for quite some time and it sounded exciting to her. This trend became even more popular after COVID as social media presence became mainstream. It sounded exciting. living off the grid in a minimalistic lifestyle surrounded with nature and its beauty who wouldn't like that if you scroll through gabby's instagram you can see that she has posted exactly that she wanted to not only experience this lifestyle for her but she wanted to do it with the love of her life her soulmate brian laundry there is a lot of information now than it was when i first started watching the news Almost every news covered Gabby and it was one shocking fact after another. So there is a lot to unpack here and I will be narrating the story with a detailed timeline so you can get all the facts. Also since I first started following this case, Brian's Instagram account is no longer active and so the quotes that I mention here are from different sources, mostly from the screenshots that I took when I first started researching this case. Gabby's account however is still there. So without wasting much time let's get started as always to know what happened in the end we have to start from the beginning Gabby Petito was born in Long Island New York in the hamlet of Blue Point she was the oldest of six siblings and had attended Bayport Blue Point High School where she met her boyfriend Brian Laundry Brian and Gabby bonded over their shared love for travel and in 2019 Gabby would move to North Point Florida where she would live with Brian and his parents Christopher and Roberta in Webasso Avenue The young couple loved taking road trips and they never failed to document these and upload them on social media When the pandemic hit they couldn't travel that much and their road trips came to a halt I mean all us did didn't it Gabby and Brian met in high school and in July of 2020 Brian proposed and Gabby said yes. She was the happiest girl in the world. 
They soon started planning their beautiful future together and decided on starting their own YouTube channel called Nomadic Static. And the blurb of this YouTube channel was, quote, After our first cross-country trip in a little Nissan Sentra, we both decided we wanted to downsize our lives and travel full-time. End quote. Gabby's mother, Nicole Schmidt, said that her daughter loved the idea of being on the road. She said, quote, She just fell in love with the lifestyle and wanted to take journeys. She was a free spirit. Everyone was jealous. Everyone was like, we want to do that too. But we all think we just have to get a job and go to school. But she was doing what we were all envious of. And I supported her on all of that. Even every once in a while, she needed help money-wise and stuff because it was a really expensive trip. I helped her out a little bit here and there. And so did her father. End quote. Gabby's mother Nicole and her father Joe are divorced and Joe moved to Vero Beach, Florida to be close to his daughter. Nothing much was initially said about what Gabby's parents thought of Brian when he first started dating her. Gabby's mother said that Brian's family was always warm and welcoming towards Gabby. She further said, quote, She loved her like a daughter. As far as we know, they were all very caring and treated her like one of the family. His mom was excited about the engagement. End quote. Although both families were warm and welcoming to this relationship and the couple, it didn't seem like Brian and Gabby were that excited. Brian had put up a post on Instagram which read, quote, My biggest fear is that one day I'll wake up and it will all have been a dream because this is what every second has felt like since the moment we found each other. Till death do us part, or until I wake up. I'm so happy the answer was yes. Love you, honey. End quote. Gabby's mother Nicole even said that they had once called off the engagement because they felt like it was too soon. I mean, Gabby was 22 and Brian was 23, so it may have been too soon for them. A lot can be said from their Instagram posts itself. For instance, Brian's Instagram bio suggests that everyone should take a hike each day because bug bites are better than being brainwashed by the media. I find that interesting and true to some extent. The way media portrays everything today, it's hard to know what to believe and what not to. Now as we know, Gabby and Brian wanted to be on the road. They loved nature and so they ended up investing in a 2012 Ford Transit Connect van that they then converted into a camper. Gabby had been working as a pharmacy technician to save up some money so that she could contribute to this road trip. This long journey of theirs would be through Kansas, Colorado, Utah and Wyoming taking place from June 17th. Before getting started on their trip, Gabby and Brian travelled to Long Island to attend her brother's high school graduation on July 2nd. After the event, they both set off on their adventure. The whole van life kicked off and on social media, the couple were active, updating their day-to-day -day routines, encounters and feelings on being on the open road. Soon their followers started rapidly increasing as Gabby and Brian were living the life that everyone wanted to. Usually the pretty caption words are not a true description of what's actually happening behind closed van doors. And we all know that. Not everything is sunshine and roses as shown on social media. On July 4th and 5th of 2021, Gabby and Brian were at the Monument Rocks in Kansas when Gabby posted a picture of herself next to some of those rock formations. The caption on July 4th read, quote, There's no place like the tiny home we built. End quote. On Brian's Instagram account, he posted a picture of himself sitting on the top of the van with the caption, quote, Downsizing our life to fit into this itty bitty van was the best decision we've ever made. With the limited space, we wanted to take advantage of every inch while also keeping everything minimalist. Definitely felt inspired by a lot of other van lifers on YouTube, but we came up with a completely original layout, barely spent anything on the conversion, and couldn't be happier with the outcome. Van tour coming soon. Sacrificing space to wake up in nature every day has been no sacrifice at all. End quote. This is my opinion alone 
and while i was reading both these captions which were published on the same day while visiting the same place it kind of feels like gabby and brian had a completely different outlook towards life and this is seen in most of the posts that the couple would post in the coming days brian's captions are more about saving the environment and how everyone should live a life like he does while gabby posts more about how happy she is on the trip and how the world is such a beautiful place and she can't contain her happiness on july 8 the couple were in colorado springs and gabby posted a picture of herself posing in front of a flower mural in old colorado city on july 10th gabby and brian were visiting the great sand dunes in colorado The picture taken here is one of the most popular ones circulated during the journey of this case by the media. Brian posted a picture of himself on the sand dunes with the caption, quote, "First time out to the great sand dunes. I've never set foot in a trail like this, let alone surfed down hills of sand or tasted sand. I got to taste a lot of sand." end quote. On July 10th, Gabby posted on Instagram saying, quote, I'm so grateful we got such an awesome spot to spend the night and surf the dunes and the night sky. Here was insane. I've never seen so many stars. End quote. On July 11th, Gabby wrote that this would be their last day in Colorado and they were moving on to Utah. On July 16th, Gabby and Brian were in Zion National Park. Gabby wrote on Instagram that they'd been there for two nights and they were staying at Watchmen Campground in the park. She wrote, quote, "The past two nights camping in Zion have been so cool literally. We hiked up here in about 100 degrees and it was so nice coming back to our campsite, watching the sky fill with dark clouds and view the lightning storm in a nice cool air of the light rain." End quote. With this she also posted some pictures of the interior of the tent. Brian posted some pictures of Zion with the caption, quote, "Zion is proof that mankind can ruin anything even in an effort to preserve it. Beautiful park just with the unfortunate infestation of human beings." End quote. This is what I believe that he has a very negative outlook towards life while Gabby is more about you know I'm so happy this is such a beautiful place I just love being here Next they travel to Bryce Canyon in the Dixie National Forest still in Utah Brian posted a picture of himself with the caption quote Thank you at Gabby Espetito for putting up with me through Utah a topographic playground A lot of people have wondered what did he mean by putting up with me did they have a fight was there something that brian said and she did not like it was there a small disagreement a big fight or was he just an annoying person the way that he posts online maybe she did something and he just he just snapped by now they were in the van for several weeks at this point when you are in so close quarters with someone else especially your partner you start to fight you start to have some arguments not big arguments small arguments you start to have communication issues sometimes there are some habits of your partner that you don't like it's natural it's a part it's a part and parcel of being in a relationship with someone you don't like a person 100% there are of course going to be some things that will annoy you about this person arguments happen fights do take place and people reconcile people get together after that could gabby and brian have a fight at this point and was this what he was referring to when he wrote this we will never know by july 26 gabby and brian had moved to the mystic hot springs in monroe utah as i said van life sounds fun until you're stuck in day in and day out with one person it was raining quite a bit over there while they were in utah and this would prevent them from going out as this van is not the huge one where you have a kitchen and a bathroom it made it quite difficult for them This is a Ford Transit Connect so it is not even the full sized Ford Transit they are not that big On July 28th Gabby and Brian created a website it said that you need a password to log in I tried to look for this website but it has been taken down maybe the domain expired or someone took it down so I'm not sure but the website is currently not available online On July 29th they were in Canyonlands National Park where they encountered some dust storms. 
This also contributed to them spending more time indoors. On July 30, Gabby posted some pictures on Instagram which she captioned with a story about how Brian hiked barefoot everywhere they went. Her followers went crazy and they were wondering how he managed this. Gabby wrote that Brian inspired her to live a more natural lifestyle and that she was also building up her feet so that one day she could walk barefoot like him. After this for some time Brian and Gabby went off the social media radar. They appeared again on August 10th. A man traveling the country in his own converted van ran into the couple near Moab, Utah. His name was Jay Foster and he is from Alabama. Jay was traveling in his own van when he stopped to chat with the couple. They talked for about 40 minutes. Their conversation was mostly about the different modifications they had made to the van. Jay later said that, quote, "They were holding hands. They were ecstatic about their rebuild. That's what I find weird about this whole situation. They were both really cool and there didn't seem to be anything wrong whatsoever." End quote. According to Jay, Brian had done most of the mechanical modifications to the van while Gabby had furnished and decorated the interior. She was quite proud of her work, especially the sink that she installed. Jay remembered that Brian had mentioned their next stop would be Yellowstone National Park. After this conversation, Jay went on a hike and when he came back, the van was gone. On August 12th, law enforcement in Moab, Utah, were called in with regards to a domestic problem near the Moonflower Community Cooperative. Apparently, Brian and Gabby were seen by a witness who claimed that they were arguing over a cell phone. The witness called 911 and later claimed that she saw Gabby slap Brian, and then Gabby climbed into the van through the driver's side window. Law enforcement caught up to Gabby and Brian as their van neared the entrance to the Arches National Park. The responding officer said that the van was driving 45 miles per hour in a 15 mile per hour zone. He then witnessed the van swerve, it crossed the center line of the road and then swerved again with the front and rear passenger side wheels hitting a curb. So the officer got down from the car, walked up to the van and asked Brian who was driving the car to turn off the engine and keep the keys on the dashboard. The police then separated the two and questioned them on what happened. According to Brian, Gabby wanted everything to be neat and tidy and she made sure the van was always that. But Brian loved hiking barefoot and when he tried to get into the van with his muddy feet, she didn't like it. The couple said that they were engaged and in love and this was just a minor disagreement. Once the officer had separated the two, Gabby started crying. It can very well be seen and heard through the footage that the officer was trying his best to console her. So now after all the tears and explanations the real truth came out. Gabby at that time also admits to hitting Brian accidentally after he locked her out of the van and she thought that he was going to drive off and leave her there all alone so she panicked. She further added, "Quote, I just quit my job to travel across the country and I'm trying to start a blog, a travel blog." So I've been building my website. I've been really stressed and he doesn't believe that I can do any of it. End quote. From Brian's side of the story on this matter, he told the officer, quote, "She gets worked up sometimes and I really try to distance myself from her. So I lock the car and I wait for her." End quote. Brian told the police officers that Gabby had been stressed out with her blog. Gabby told the officers that she was struggling with OCD and anxiety issues. Gabby's father later went on to Dr. Phil and said that Gabby never had OCD. He said that she liked things a certain way and this has nothing to do with OCD. I agree with him to some extent. Gabby needs things to be clean and tidy. I do too. I lived in a hostel while I was studying and I hated it when someone came from out and just jumped on the bed with their dirty feet. It rains a lot here and muddy feet on the place I sleep is not something that I would love. Even if it's someone really close to me, I would not appreciate someone just sitting on the bed with their muddy feet. So that doesn't mean that I have OCD. It just means that I need things to be clean. Everyone needs things to be clean. Maybe Gabby just wanted things to be clean and Brian was like walking all over the van with his muddy feet and this got her all worked up. Gabby also said that she and Brian had been fighting all morning and she didn't like this. The police asked Brian about the scratches on his face, for which he said that Gabby had her phone in her hand 
and she was trying to get the keys from him he asked her to take a step back and relax and that they can talk about this but at this point she got him with her phone and that's what left a scratch on his face the standard story circulating in the media at that time was what brian said but later on the original 911 call was released and this call told a very different story according to the police reports the caller said quote the driver of the van a male had some sort of argument with the female gabby the male tried to create distance by telling gabby to go take a walk to calm down and she didn't want to be separated from the male and began slapping him he grabbed her face and pushed her back as she pressed upon him and the van he tried to lock her out and succeeded except for his driver's door she opened that and forced her way over him and into the vehicle before he drove off end quote initially the responding officer wrote in his report that he believed there was some form of hitting involved but he later removed it from the report saying no one had reported that brian had struck gabby but in the 911 call we can definitely hear the witness saying that there was some form of hitting involved the person who called 911 said quote we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl then we stopped they ran up and down the sidewalk he proceeded to hit her hopping in the car and they drove off end quote at the end of the day the police basically said that they didn't think that this was a domestic violence issue or at least an issue that seemed to go somewhere they thought it was more of a mental health issue and they did not want to press any charges there are a lot of people out there who are saying that the police were not on her side and that if they had taken a much better look or if they had done something then maybe gabby would be alive today these are my words personally i believe that there wasn't much that the police could do right now it's easy to point out and say okay the police should have done something at that time and gabby would be alive today but no one would know that it could very well be a couple fight which would resolve after some time there was in no way that the police could know that this fight was going to lead to something really big later on the police have been accused before of not being human enough and using excessive force when the person had not done anything or when the person had done something wrong so it's hard for the officer to say what's what and i feel the officer handled the scene well by first separating the two and then questioning both of them separately so that one person did not have the chance to mention or tell the other what to speak that way we got and the police got an idea of what gabby was thinking and what brian was thinking in the end the police decided it would be in the best interest to separate gabby and brian for the night Gabby would stay in the van and the police department arranged for Brian to stay at a local hotel called the Bowen Motel in Moab. The next day Brian published no such posts on Instagram mentioning anything about the Moab incidents. His post had a picture of him holding half a cantaloupe, I guess. He posted a caption saying, "Quote, not a lot of biodegradable packaging for on the go food these days that's why i stick with my melon rinds apple cores peach pits and banana peels also most melons contain around 90% water talk about hydration let's keep plastic water bottles off the trail or yet better off the planet end quote on the same day brian posted a long rant stating quote Humans are primates, great apes in fact, but I don't know how all great we are as a species. Chimpanzees share 98.8% of their DNA with humans, our closest living relatives. But as I see it, every living creature is in some way our relative, even trees. Only 800 million years ago, animal cells started appearing on the earth, comprised of mainly the same parts and following the same function as plant cells. requiring oxygen solar energy minerals nutrients and water this tree was surviving in only inches of soil in an area of extreme heat and drought i think our culture our society has put itself above all living creatures creating needs purely to support destructive economic practices this tree doesn't require an apple watch it doesn't stream its favorite shows or have a microwave oven pay health insurance or drink grande iced caramel macchiatos It's just a tree, but you rarely see gays riding jet skis or wearing designer clothing either. I think if we all want breathable air and drinkable water, we need to learn how to live with less. End quote. Wow, that's a lot. After this post, 
he will never post again. On August 17, Brian flew back to Florida, leaving Gabby and the van in Utah. He said he needed to do this to help his father empty out a storage unit where he and Gabby had been storing some of their other things in. His father had offered to keep their things at his house so they didn't have to spend money on a storage unit. Brian did not return to Utah until August 23rd. Now it's possible that the couple may have decided to take a break after their whole public fight and maybe this was a way for them to stay away from each other for quite some time and then get back together. But why not tell this to the world? There was no mention of this to anyone, especially when they were putting their whole life out there on social media. Why didn't they just tell this to everyone? On August 19th, with Brian gone, Gabby posted on Instagram. Now there are two photos. One is an aerial shot of the van and one is a shot of Gabby's legs. She appears to be sitting in the van, so she's taking a picture of her legs from inside the van. but you can see outside the van this is strange and for multiple reasons first and foremost the post does not sound anything like gabby would say or at least her style of writing the captions to these pictures are quote almost immediately after telling brian how happy it made me to see that people were truly respectful of the park i watched some guy leave his processed prepackaged plastic conglomerate of lunch garbage on the picnic table end quote and then there is a sad face emoji this doesn't make sense she posted this on august 19th and brian was not in utah at that time or at least that's what he said so how did she say in the caption that almost immediately her words doesn't make sense and also the caption that she posted it does not sound something like what gabby would say as i'd said before gabby and brian had completely different outlook towards life So far whatever quotes i have read from their instagram accounts you can understand that gabby was more about the positive side of life she was writing more about how happy she was how much she loved her life how much she loved traveling how much she loved being with brian while brian was mostly ranting out about how humans are trying to destroy the world and this caption sounds somewhat like that it sounds like these are my words but it sounds like something that brian would write not gabby The post also had some hashtags that Gabby had never used before such as hashtag #lift plastic free and hashtag #lift sustainable. Also most of Gabby's Instagram posts until this one had its location tags on. So you can see where she has posted this photo from or where she has clicked this photo. But this specific picture did not have its location tags on. Some people in the comments also pointed out that the same exact photo of Gabby's legs had been posted on her Instagram story on August 2nd. Many believe that Brian was the one who had written this post and not Gabby. On the same day Gabby posted her first and only video on the couple's YouTube channel titled "Quote Beginning Our Van Life Journey." End quote. The video is available on YouTube. Honestly, it breaks my heart to watch this video. Now, something about the video is that it is said that the footage of this video is from their current trip. but a lot of people have said that the video looks like a mashup from their previous trips there is also an aerial shot of the van so if this was their first trip how did they have that so it's possible that this could be a mashup from their previous trips on 21st august gabby called her father joe on facetime she said she was in salt lake city but they lost the power she said she couldn't get on wifi she asked her father if he could order her food through uber eats and the food was delivered to the Fairfield Inn in Salt Lake City where Gabby was staying while Brian was in Florida. Joe said that everything seemed fine and normal. Nothing out of the ordinary. But this would be the last time that he would ever talk to her. On August 24, Brian and Gabby were seen checking out of the Fairfield Inn in Salt Lake City. A cashier at the Perkins told the Daily Mail that she remembered seeing Gabby in the hotel lobby. The cashier was later shown a picture of Brian and she said that she didn't remember Brian being with her. However, the cashier at the Kick 66 convenience store, which was just a few hundred yards away at the Fairfield Inn, remembered the couple coming in on the evening of 21st August. This is odd because as per Brian's timeline, he was not supposed to be there with Gabby at that time. The cashier said, "Quote, they came in together on the night of August 21st." I remember them because he was telling her to hurry up. End quote. 
The cashier said that Gabby didn't respond to Brian, but she did go outside to use her phone. It is also to be noted that during this time, Brian was seen purchasing bottled water, a few packages of instant noodles, and donuts. On 25th August, Gabby told her mother that they were heading to Grand Teton next. Gabby also mentioned that she wasn't sure where this relationship with Brian was heading towards. This would be the last phone conversation Gabby would have with her mother. After that, all conversations were done via text. On the same day, the couple arrived at Grand Teton National Park in Utah. Gabby posted a picture of herself in front of a wall mural holding a little knitted pumpkin with the caption, Happy Halloween. It is believed that this is the monarch mural outside of Ogden, Utah. The area was initially checked for surveillance to see if the couple were actually there. When the picture was taken, it was nowhere close to Halloween. It was August. So could this have been a repost? Did Gabby really post this picture? After this, Gabby would never post on her Instagram again. The owner of Rustic Row, a business in Idaho, claimed that Gabby and Brian stopped into the store on August 25th and 26th. They stayed for about 20 minutes and told the shop owner that they were traveling from Florida and they had just been to Grand Teton National Park and they were going to Yellowstone. The owner said, quote, They seemed happy when they left. She hollered from the door that they were engaged and I said congratulations. End quote. Now, Grand Teton National Park is roughly 30 miles south of Yellowstone and the shop that the couple were allegedly seen in was in Victor, which was only about a mile from Yellowstone. Nicole claimed that throughout Gabby's trip, they had stayed in constant touch. If she didn't have signal, then Gabby would call her the very next chance that she got. But this time was different. Gabby always kept Nicole updated on her travels, but now Gabby wouldn't talk to her, but rather text and that got her worried. On August 27th, Nicole received a text from Gabby's number, but she has her doubts as to whether Gabby was the one who sent the text or was it Brian. As said, the text told her that there was no service in Yosemite. Nicole found it odd because she knew that Gabby had not been planning to visit Yosemite and Gabby was in Utah at this time, while Yosemite is in California. Gabby and Brian were planning to go to Yellowstone, not Yosemite. So why would she text Nicole and tell her there was no service in Yosemite? Nicole said she got a text from Gabby saying, quote, Can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. End quote. Now Stan is Gabby's grandfather, but Nicole said that Gabby never called him Stan. So why now? This is why Nicole and many others believe that Gabby was not the one who was sending these texts, but rather it was Brian. Nicole believed that Brian was the one who was sending these messages with the intention of misleading people. On August 31st, there was some new activity on Gabby's Spotify account. A new playlist was created which was titled Self Consumption. It's believed that Brian was the one who created this as they both shared one account. On September 1st, new songs were added to this playlist. These songs were more about love and heartache. It's creepy when you think about it, because if we are going on this theory, then it was Brian who added these songs and he did so after killing Gabby. After everything that was uncovered in the past few months, it is mostly true. Brian would listen to these songs on repeat. With this, we will end part 1 of the Gabby Petito series. There is a lot more to uncover, there is a lot more to know. Stay tuned next week for the second and final part in this series. If you like this episode, then please do give it a 5 star rating on whichever platform you are listening from and follow me for the next in the series. That's it for the day. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to follow me on social media, especially Instagram. The links are in my description box. You can also find the episode show notes on my website 3amfear.com. If you love reading thrillers, you can now check out my free ebook available on my website. Once again, thank you so much for being here today and see you next week. Have a great week and stay safe out there.